our country. <clears throat> it was the day before they sailed for home that the royal family enjoyed their deferred trip by a cable car to the top of Table Mountain. This is a fascinating experience, and as the car goes up to the summit of the world-famous landmark that dominates the Cape, magnificent views are revealed on every side. Field Marshal Smuts, who had climbed up earlier on foot, had been waiting to greet them. It was on this occasion that he retrieved the Queen's hat, which was blown off by the wind. Picking up a feather that had come out of it, he stuck it in his own hat. They all spent some time on Table Mountain, looking down over 3,000 feet to the city and admiring the view. The royal family taking almost their last look of the tour at the country of South Africa. It was, of course, at the foot of the mountain that the final scene was enacted. In the king's phrase, the royal family had crossed and recrossed the vast dominion. As to the importance and the success of the visit, there is not the slightest doubt. Now, farewells were being said. Countless friends had been made. Only a few of them could be there today to say goodbye. Field Marshal Smuts, who had described the tour as very far-reaching in its effect, was one of the last to thank them for coming and to wish them au revoir. Cape Town was there to see them off, and a feature of the departure scene was the singing. There was the traditional Sari Marais, for instance. And there was another, which well expressed the hospitality, the loyalty, and the real affection of South Africans. Will you know, come back again. <laughs> 